So we've talked about all these tiny microscopic things, these afferent arterioles, these glomeruli, but how are they actually laid out within the overall kidney? Let's take a look at that. So if we look at a kidney, it has a shape like this. And if you were to slice a kidney in half and look at it, one thing you'd notice very quickly is that it looks like there's kind of two different parts. One is the part I'm drawing here, and this is the outside of the kidney, and it's what we call the cortex of the kidney, or the renal cortex. And the other is the inside here, the middle, which we call the medulla. The medulla of the kidney, or the renal medulla. And so where on this picture do you think the glomerulus is? Is it gonna be here or here? Well, it turns out that actually every single one of the glomeruli is out here in the cortex. So here we can draw a bunch of them. And so in that case, where do you think every nephron is? Well, since the nephron comes off the glomerulus, obviously the nephron should be in the cortex too. But it turns out that you remember we have that very loopy thing, the loop of Henle. The loop of Henle actually does dive into the medulla of the kidney. And then it comes right back out again, and then we get our distal convoluted tubule, and then our fluid enters the collecting duct, and the collecting duct also ends up going down into the medulla. So every single nephron kind of follows this path. This guy also, his proximal convoluted tubule is here, then a loop of Henle dives down, then a distal convoluted tubule empties into a collecting duct. And so where are these collecting ducts going? Well, they're actually gonna go all the way to the very center of the kidney. So let's draw this guy going down there. Let's draw maybe another one coming down there as well. And the collecting ducts we know are taking what's pretty much urine and they wanna get it to the bladder. So what they do is they empty it into a larger tube, which is called a calyx. And this calyx will join up with another calyx to form an even bigger calyx. And maybe over here you have some other calyces. The plural of calyx is calyces. So maybe here you have some other calyces that join together. And all these calyces are eventually gonna to come together to form the, you guessed it, this is the ureter. And so this way we gather up all of this urine that's coming out of the collecting ducts and get it into the ureter so that it can go to the bladder and then you can pee it out. But actually it turns out that if you did cut open a kidney and look at it, yes, you'd see this, but you'd actually see even a little more. So let's take a look at the other stuff that you'd see. So we drew the cortex out here like this, and then inside we drew the medulla. But actually if you cut open the kidney, you would see that the medulla is kind of made up of two different parts. So it's made up of these kind of triangular things here that I'm drawing, and then the space in between. Now these triangular things, such as this one, these are called pyramids, renal pyramids. And it's through these guys that the collecting ducts are coming down towards the calyces. But then what is this stuff in between? What is that for? Well, here we have a lot of what we call fibrous tissue. So that's kind of tough connective tissue that's gonna help hold the kidney together. But it's actually not only that, it's also, we talked about the fact that we have the renal artery coming in and then it splits up into little blood vessels that fan out towards the outside of the kidney. And those blood vessels actually go through this fibrous area between the pyramids. And it's also through these fibrous parts of the kidney that the venous blood coming back from the outside of the kidney comes through and then it merges together and leaves the kidney as we know as the renal vein.